We are now joined by the University of Hawaii, uh, the newest member in the Mountain West Conference. So welcome, gentlemen. We will open up with a statement from head coach Norm Chow. Well, first of all, we're, we're awfully glad and, and, and proud to be here, to be a part of the Mountain West. Um, I personally have been part of the Mountain West or the WAC, whatever it used to be called many years ago, and a, a chance to come back and see some old faces and see some new ones. Uh, it's an exciting time for all of us. Um, we're especially proud of the two young guys that we brought with us, um, Mike Edwards and Pai Pai Falamalo, two of the real leaders on our football team and who we have very high expectations of. Uh, we're excited about the challenge. We understand the challenges that await us um, with, the, with, the, with the new league and the travel and that kind of thing, but uh, we're awfully excited to get going. Thank you, Coach. And as Coach Chow mentioned, we have cornerback Mike Edwards with us and defensive lineman Pai Pai Falamalu. We'll now open it up for questions from the media. Brian Murphy with the Idaho Statesman. Uh, Coach, I've heard you've installed uh, some, some unique discipline methods uh, at Hawaii. Uh, can you elaborate on, on some of the things you've done for, for guys that maybe have been late to class or, <laughs> or late to practice? And, and maybe if one of the players wanted to chime in on on how the uh, tone has changed there at the University of Hawaii? <laughs> well, you know, I'll, I'll let them address that as well, but I don't know if they're unique. If, you know, I think discipline is an important part of college football. Uh, we expect the young men to, to, to be in an A gap and, and to, to make sure his buddy's in the B gap. I think it all, pl all has a hand in, in the discipline that goes on off the field as well. And uh, I think young people want to do well. I think young people are trying to be the best they can be. And, with our help, if they decide that they're not going to do that, we, um, we're trying to make it work. Um, as far as the uniqueness, uh, I'll let these guys tell you about that. <laughs> Go ahead, Pai Pai. Uh, well, I personally wouldn't, have, wouldn't know about any of those because <laughs> I'm not late to class. <laughs> <laughs> I do my stuff off the field, so I wouldn't know too much about that. But I hear it's pretty funny, uh, some of the guys that get disciplined. Mike, anything on your end? He's, Mike's been on there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So when the, uh, when, the, when the coaches first got there, you know, they, they made a definitely impact about uh, discipline and how serious things was going to be, you know, even the smallest things, you know, because I had a problem with, you know, not, not all fully cooperating like maybe in study hall or something like that where as I'm just going through my notes and still have my headphones on and stuff where – as you know, Coach Child just wants to implement around there, like everything counts, you know, everybody's got to put in and put in the work and everybody's got to be accountable for things on and off the field for us to be successful on the field. So it all plays hand in hand together. It's not, it's not hard. You know, everybody wants to, do, everybody wants to do the right things. Everybody wants to do good. It's just the people who have the will to do it. You have to, you have to get it done. And um, it's, it's definitely it's definitely made an impact on us as a as a program, and you can see the changes around already. Mike Prohard from the Loving Reporter Herald. Norm, how many different I mean, how many different opportunities do you have to be a head coach prior to this, and why Hawaii? Why now? Well, I, I've been very fortunate in my career. I, I've I've had several opportunities to to become a head coach. Uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's it's difficult. What people don't understand is, you know, when you have a staff of nine assistants and only one gets to be chosen as the head coach, uh, being a head coach is a very competitive situation. We, we were blessed and had a couple of opportunities. Didn't feel like it was the right time. I, I wanted to experience some other things. I had a chance to coach in the NFL, had a chance to coach with, you know, in the Pac-12. Uh, Hawaii is home. I was born and raised there, about five minutes from the university. I did not go to school there. but. You know, I'm older, I've been around a little bit, and, and, and I just thought that this was the right opportunity, maybe a chance to work with young people like this, uh, like these two and others, uh, that it was just time. I mean, you know, the coaching profession is, is, uh, is tough now, um, and timing is never right. So uh, we're hoping that, that maybe we can give back a little bit to the university and to the state of Hawaii and, and uh, uh, produce a football team, put a product on the field on a Saturday afternoon that we can all be very, very proud of. <coughs> Robert Gagliardi, the Wyoming Tribune Eagle. Norm, you know, like you mentioned being a head coach, but now what's, what's been the biggest difference of being the main guy now as opposed to being the, the coordinator and working with just some, you know, maybe specific things? What's, what's been the biggest challenge there? It's been huge. It's been huge, my friend. I, I, I um, 
My wife called me one day, asked me what I was doing, and I looked down and I was signing requisitions for paper to add to the paper machine, the copy machine. And I uh, thought, what in the world am I doing, you know? But uh, it, there, there's so many different fa uh, facets of, of the job. I think head coaches, certainly th those especially that have been around, the Chris Alts and all that have been around for so long, people have to really admire the work that they do because there's so many different things that need to be juggled. Uh, yeah, yeah, and everyone's after some of your time, but uh, it's exciting, like I said, and it's not about coaching. It really isn't about us. It's about these young people and how excited we are because of the young men that we have in our program. Uh, that's the fun part, and that's the part that we're most excited about because um, uh, it's like Urban Meyer. I remember reading once he said it's 5% scheme and 95%, and the rest of it is our young players buying in, and I think our players have bought in, and we're excited with the challenge that awaits us. Dave Southern, Idaho Press Tribune. Uh, Coach, can you talk about, you know, kind of the offense you're going to be implementing at Hawaii and just maybe how much of a departure it might be from what we've seen for the better part of a decade there? Well, you know, June and, 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 and those fellows did a terrific job with the run and shoot. I think the run and shoot is a tremendous way to play college football. But that's not us. You know, we, uh, I wasn't brought up that way. I, I did visit with June at one point in time in our careers, and he remains a very close friend. But, you know, we, we, we want to be able to run the ball. We want to be able to play tough, hard-nosed defense. Our number one goal is to win by playing good defense. And in order to do that, uh, you have to practice against the running because most teams will run the football, and you have to keep them off the field. If you play good defense, if you're not playing, um, that means that the offensive side has the ball. But we intend to play good, hard-nosed defense as our number one goal in our, in our game plan. And in order to do that, I think we need to play a little more conventional type of offense with a tight end and a fullback every once in a while. We're going to spread you out as well, but it will be different. Will it, I don't think it will be as exciting, but it will be different. Coach Mick McGrain from the Mount West. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, David Graves obviously is a guy who comes in with a couple of games under his belt, but you've also got a transfer coming in from Duke that you haven't seen yet. Uh, where does that situation stand right now? Well, we, um, we do have a transfer from Duke. His name is Sean Schroeder. He graduated from Duke in three years, uh, was looking for a chance to play, had not played much back there. Uh, David Cutcliffe, who was a, a friend of mine, called me about him. He, would, he loves the young man, would have played, but they have a big fellow that they think is an NFL prospect. So Sean probably would not have played much. Um, David and Jeremy Higgins, uh, uh, a transfer from Utah State where I ended up our top two quarterbacks after spring ball, uh, they both understand that the changes that, that uh, we have and, and they needed to make a little more improvement. We looked for a little bit more improvement than we saw. So we're going to give Sean a chance. Uh, long answer to your short question, probably Sean, David, and Jeremy will have cracks at it in uh, camp and as quickly as possible because I'm a, I'm a firm believer in one quarterback si situation. Uh, we'll make a decision and we'll go with it. As I've told the other groups that have been up here on the podium, we've opened this up to, uh, on Facebook and Twitter to, to fans. And of course, we have a few uh, Hawaii fans out there that wanted to ask some questions. So first, I'm going to start with, uh, with Pai Pai. Uh, Daniel Spence from Los Angeles was wondering how the transition has been with the new coaching staff, uh, learning the new defensive schemes. And now that on a day-to-day -day basis in practice, you're going to be facing a new offensive scheme. How, how is that transition going for you and the team? Uh, well, we love our entire team. We love our new coaching staff. You know, they're they're a good bunch, and we're really excited to have Coach Norm come back home and uh, coach for Hawaii. And the new defense that we have, it's it's a lot better for the defensive guys. He he simple he made everything a lot simple, or simpler for us, and we can kind of just play our own game and attack the offense instead of having to sit back and kind of like the years before we'd kind of go off of what they did and kind of try to adjust our defense. This year we're going to try to be more proactive and just be aggressive and attack the other the opposing teams and. Uh, I have a, I'm a strong believer in our coaches right now. They, the tempo that they bring to practice and the attitude and the, just everything about them is wonderful. Mike, I don't know if you have a good friend back in Cleveland misses you or not, but Jim McGrath was wondering, do you ever make it back to Cleveland? And what do you miss about Cleveland? Yeah, I make it back to Cleveland um, kind of often to get some training in and, and work out and stuff. but. That's probably the only thing I miss about Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm not sure Jim will like that answer, but <laughs> Coach Chow, we have one for you as well. James Dixon from Honolulu wanted you to talk, and you've talked, to, you've addressed it a little bit today about 
being a first-time head coach and the changes you've gone through, does it make it any easier coming into a league where you're so familiar with a lot of the institutions? You know, not really because the personnel changes. Uh, I think we, you know, I know some of the coaches. I think what make the tra what's made the transition easier is I've, I've, I've had a chance to work with some other terrific head coaches and I've learned along the way the, the things that I would like to, you know, to do, we would like to do, if you will, and, and those that we don't want to do. So I've been blessed with to be in, being around terrific head coaches, like I said, and, and, uh, and uh, terrific players that all help in, in, in formulating a style, if you will, a philosophy. Um, so that part's been fun. But as far as the league, it, uh, give us a week or two and we can get some, some looks at some guys on tape and we'll know better where we stand amongst the others. Any other questions for Coach Chow or the student athletes? We'll go right down here. Have you talked about you know, some of the influences that you, from the people you've worked with personally or through your coaching career that you kind of want to pass on to us? Well, I've, I've been blessed to, to be, a lot, be around a lot of coaches, uh, uh, especially a, a fellow that has since passed away. His name is Doug Scoville. You know, we, I started coaching at, at BYU. He was the offensive coordinator, and, and we hit it off. I was actually the receiver coach, and he was the quarterback coach. He really was the quarterback slash receiver coach. I was just the, the guy that got him the, his coffee when he needed it. But I, uh, I, I, I was smart enough to learn and, and to, to try to listen and to, to do uh, everything he asked me to do. And, and there have been others, obviously. I've worked with Chuck Amato, Lavelle Edwards, uh, you know, Pete Carroll. Uh, they've all been great influences because you see the, their style of leadership and, and what they bring to the table. Uh, and, and if you just can copy some of those things, you'll be okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Coach Chow will be available in Condesa 2 for the next 30 minutes. Thank you very much.